like a five plus. Holy sh You ready to go on the trip? All right, y'all, Chick-fil-A to start the trip. Welcome back to another episode over on the Weston Smith channel. Devin is driving. I'm gonna be doing some editing on our three-hour drive. We are headed to some new lakes far, far away from home. We got, we got Zeke with us. Devin's behind the wheel, and we are uh, ready to have some fun. We got the hot tamale out back, tow hole mode on in the tundra, and we are three hours and 11 minutes from the destination, couple hundred miles away, y'all. We'll see you there. Look y'all, it's bodacious. Little update, we're about 45 minutes from the destination. Homie is just like cutting us off, that was cool. And yeah, not a whole lot out here, but the uh, lakes are supposed to be fire, man, so we are pumped about this whole deal. We got a bunch of places to hit. We're gonna tell you all about each and every one of these locations when we get to it. First thing we gotta do is get to our cabin. We're gonna go check in, drop a couple things off, and then hit the first spot. Ha, we found some flare toys. You can just log into your reservation online. Dude, we pulled up the cabins. This place looks so sick. All right, man, checking in. Look at this place right here. A little dining, living space, living quarters. Look at all this. Look, we got the editing station, the TV tray, couch. Come back in here. Boom, boom, one for us, one for Zeke. Look at the accommodations, man. Yeah. Well, the journey begins. Question is, which one of these like four or five lakes that we've been eyeballing do we want to hit first? Well, as quick as we were ready to go fishing, y'all, look what happened. It is raining. I should probably uh, go close the windows on the truck. So we are taking advantage of the time and making a little bit of burgers before we get out later tonight. Cheers, y'all. We have made it to Lake Nakanish Retreat, and this place is so awesome. There's like four cabins on site. We talked with the owner of the property, and uh, he was giving us all the juicy details on the lake. We're going to tell you guys a lot more about the uh, the water, but what Devin and I have done while it's raining is taken some time to grill up some burgers as well as some pasta she made. We got the old vinaigrette dressing on deck, and we're about to enjoy a nice lunch before we get out on the boat. I think this uh, shower is going to pass pretty quickly, and then we'll get to some fishing. just launched onto Lake Nakanish for the very first time. The place is absolutely stunning. Uh, it's about a 700 acre lake, y'all, so we're only gonna get a chance to hit probably a portion of it this evening. It's about 5.45 in the afternoon, but the temperature has dropped, we are thrilled. Literally, some rain came through. It was in the 90s, now it's like mid 70s. It feels nice out. I mean, this is the first time it's felt nice out fishing in Texas in quite some time. We're already seeing fish burst at the surface, man, like busting on, I don't know, we've got the dragonflies going or something, and they're coming up here and eating these insects. Pretty sure it's bass, but also uh, what the guy was telling us that owns these cabins, come up here, look at this. There's like this thermal layer, right? that goes down to about 10 feet that you can see. Well, it's showing more like 15 feet. This is what's so fantastic about this live scope system. We can see right where these fish are hanging out. So we're actually in spot block right now. So the live scope system is looking around, but as we, uh, as it pans and we're seeing different areas of the water, these fish are hanging out just above that thermal layer. So we know exactly what to cast and how far down to go. So I would say something like a 15 to 20 foot diving crankbait, or maybe you could toss down anything, jig, worm, what have you, but you, you could toss down like a swim bait and we can work it right in that zone because right here it's about 30 feet deep. All these fish are hanging out in 10 to 15 feet. So this live scope system should come into play major on this trip, guys. We're so thrilled to finally get some lines in the water. We're gonna go ahead and start casting. All right, y'all, we're making our first few casts. Devin is using a crankbait. We came over to this dam area. This is kind of like uh, near the ramp, so figured we'd just give it a shot before we hit the majority of this place. Uh, we've been seeing these fish jump again, and so I saw one down there a little ways. We're just gonna work towards the end of this thing real fast. Crank and popper. And if we don't get anything on this stuff, we're gonna move on down. Yep. I can't. 
can't tell. Kinda yes. Looks like yeah. It. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Ooh. Okay. First one of the trip. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Oh my God. He came off. That was like a five plus. Holy shit. That was a big bass, Devin. Oh no. Oh no. Oh okay. no. Okay. We're like. We gotta stay here. Oh no. Wow. Y'all, Devin just missed one of the biggest bass we would have caught this entire year. Where's the net? <laughs> Guys, if y'all want to know how to miss a big fish, that's how you do it. Just bring him right to the boat, let him go. What if that's the biggest one of the whole trip? <laughs> he was freaking huge. That was like a five plus. Got him. Did you see him miss it the first time though? <laughs> I just, I'm lucky I just kept it there. Oh wow. That's actually a pretty good bass. That's actually a pretty good bass. I heard it. What? This thing has living things on it. What the heck? Look at this. What are these? Are they moving? They're moving. What the f is that? I know. Oh, weird. Crazy. Guys, my first fish of the trip choked the frog. First catch out here on the Filthy Frog. You guys can pick these up down in the link in the description. Save. I'm getting bite. I'm getting bite. Oh. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and get him back in the water. You guys, if you want to pick up a Filthy Frog for yourself, you can do that on the cheap with the link in the description. He's three pounds, but how much, how much over? Oh, golly. That's a testament to the scripper skill, you guys. This thing holds on. 3.28 pounds to start the night. Let's get him. Holy moly! Holy crap! What you got? What you got? What you got? I'm gonna keep it in a little. Oh, 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 yeah. oh you lose my <laughs> mono worm! There's my worm! Oh no! He's not fighting like he's tiny. He's fighting like he weighs like seven pounds, bud. Come here! No! He's not little by any means. Like Dang. he's good fish. <laughs> Barely hooked, guys. First one for me of the trip, guys. Good fish. This is our third bite in the past, what, we've been out here maybe 45 minutes? Yeah, not long at all. Not long at all. We're trying to get these fish dialed in and we're doing something right because we're catching them. But guys, beautiful fish. Oh, it feels good to get the skunk off my back, guys. Yes. Let's go ahead, get him back in the water. Let's get some more. So we were hitting that side getting a lot of hits then we came over here and got a lot less so we are going full speed on the trolling motor to the other side i think we're going to be cranking at about four miles an hour <laughs> back to the crank bit over here oh, oh oh my god look at the guard chasing oh that was god, a big old guard whoa that guard was about to eat himself a bluegill whoa whoa <laughs> Half of Whoa, he was following it in. I know, uh, but I don't know if they could. I hope you guys could see that. I don't know if it was angled down enough. I tried to lean forwards for you guys. That guard just chased the jackal gantrail all the way to the boat. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That was intense. <laughs> I probably could have like figure eighted it and had him eat it, but then I like freaked out and scared him away. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and make this move. We are going across town. We didn't really run it on the way over here. The ramp is literally like right over there and this is all deep, but we're gonna get into some sticky situations. So kill switch on the vest, strap her up, and we gonna make our way across this place. Let's go. We're installing a new mount for you guys. New perspective. There we go, fish. There we go. Yep. Oh, I think he came off. He came off. Oh no. Okay, so this side of the lake is insane, y'all. Uh, you thought fork was bad. We're gonna <laughs> work this one for a minute in this area, 
and then probably just head back out to the spot we started at because a little bit more confidence inspiring when you've never hit this place and there's so many stumps i mean it's i mean they're everywhere you can't miss them uh, we've already thrown a crank some worms and a couple swim baits over here we are now venturing a little bit shallower i'm now switching over to the frog We've been seeing a little bit of fish kind of burst at the surface. Not sure if they're bass, but we're going to investigate. That was a whopper popper i wouldn't have missed it well you've got a fast moving bait i'm gonna throw on the crankbait that white one and cast like along where the buoys are as i move up and we'll just cover ground quick because that's like that would only make sense don't give up on that don't give up on that plopper oh there we go there we go on the crank all right <laughs> there we go as light is fading we got one you guys here we are let me get them pliers <laughs> he's oh i was about to say he's not coming off because he's double trebled but he is coming off a pretty solid one to just about round out the evening ladies and gentlemen a fat little two and a half i'd say wow there we go on the big crank that's the grande recon he's diving deep devin's throwing the plopper the sun is setting and uh we're in about 15 feet of water they're hanging out we're actually in this lake uh, we hear good things about fishing the actual boat lanes, like the running lanes. And so we are kind of just hanging out off the side of them. Get you back in the water, bud. Could potentially be one of the last ones of the evening. And so, yeah, we're just kind of like trolling through the boat lanes. Uh, there's really only like, I'd say we've seen six boats out here this entire time. And people are not cruising fast because of all the, uh, because of all the stumps out here. So if anyone were to be coming through here, we'd have a huge heads up and just uh, get right off the lane into the uh, stumps but we're kind of just trolling through here casting alongside of it on the way back to the ramp i knew that was a bite not a tree too because it was like 